43. The American singer-songwriter Suzanne Vega made her name during the folk music revival in the early 1980s with amazing hits like Tom's Diner and Luca. 30 years on, her sound remains distinctive, but recently she's dabbled in other music styles such as hip-hop. Suzanne will be telling us about that in just a moment. First, though, a reminder of some of the songs that made her famous. I am sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. I am waiting at the counter for the man to pour the coffee. And he fills it only halfway. And before I even argue, he is looking out the window at somebody coming in. My name is Luca. I live on the second floor. I live upstairs from you. Yes, I think you've seen me before. Distracted by the women with the dimples and the curls, by the pretty and the mischievous, by the timid and the blessed. Uh, it's been a, a little while, maybe. Okay. Um, Suzanne is here. Very good morning to you. Hi. Fresh from the tour last night. Yes, we just started yeah. last night. Which was here locally, so yeah. you haven't had too far to come. That's right. And hopefully you've had a little bit of sleep. A little, yeah. Not quite enough, but, it, but <laughs> a little, yeah. What time did you finish last night? Uh, all these difficult questions. Um, <laughs> probably 11 or so, okay. and you know, get back to the hotel and all that. Stuff. Yeah. Always fascinated. I mean, there's an awful perception sometimes people think about artists who had a huge amount of fame or, or songs that became very famous early mm -hmm. on. And sometimes people think, well, where have they been all this time? What have you been doing? And of course, you've been making music constantly during that period of time. Yeah. But you had a, an amazing level of success very early on, didn't you? Yeah. Um, Yes, I did. Uh, those five years in, in the 1980s, were they were huge for me. Yeah. Yeah. And we saw there, of course, a reminder of some of the things which imprinted themselves on our minds, particularly Luca, mm -hmm. and that's such a powerful song. I was just looking back at the lyrics of it this, yeah. uh, this morning. I think at the time, I didn't realise really what was at the heart of that song. Yeah. And now, as an adult and as a mother, yeah. it's even more affecting. Yeah. Um, you have updated that on your new album, haven't you? The Luca uh, yes, story. Yes, in a, in a sense I have. There's a song called um, Song of the Stoic, and that is a, kind of a continuation of the Luca character. And I didn't set out to write it, but I wrote the song, finished it, looked at it, and realized that it was sort of like a, a, a sequel, mm. in a sense. So Luca was terribly badly treated when he was young. Yeah. What does he grow up to become in your new song? Uh, in the new song, it's it's a sad song. It's uh, he has had a difficult life, and and then he um, he's at near the end of his life, and he's sort of looking back and seeing what what he has and what he hasn't got. Um, and there's the wish for healing. Mm. Uh, basically, that's at the heart of of that song. Was Luca a real? Was it based on a real? Child? Did there was you know a real Luca? boy, but he was, uh, and his name was Luca, but he himself was not abused. I took his name and his character and put it together with other situations mm. um, that I'd known about. So it's the character is kind of fictional. Yeah, but there, there was really a child called Luca. There was Luca really a child knew. called Luca, yes. And I, I think if I had known how successful the song would have, was going to be, I don't think I, I might have thought twice about using his actual name. Yeah, because I mean, presumably he's, he's still one New he's, York. Yeah, he's alive. He's around New York somewhere. He hasn't made himself known to me, but I know that he came back to the apartment that I used to live in, uh, knocked on the door, uh, and asked, said to my roommate, could you tell this girl that Suzanne Vega really did live here? So he figured out that I lived downstairs from him and was uh, impressing his girlfriend, I think. Was he upset about that? He didn't seem upset. Song? No, no, I, not that I know of. So, uh, but that, yeah, that's the last time I'd heard from that actual child who had grown up, you know. Yeah. That is fascinating, isn't it? Let's bring things right up to date now, yeah. because the, yeah. uh, uh, the, the new music, let's have a little listen now. What do I know? My card's the fool. The fool. The fool that Mary Ruthless man there beneath my foot. Providence as my plan. Providence as my plan. Oh, it's such expensive innocence Never knowing any cost She throws around her finally 
And that's the new single, yes. Fool's Complaint. Yes. How do you feel yeah. watching that? I was uh, kind of amused, actually. I haven't seen, I didn't see that particular clip before, so I was kind of like, oh, looks yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thanks. And you're playing Glastonbury this year. Yes, I am, yeah. What's that? What, what do you feel when you think of playing Glastonbury? Is it something that you just think that's just the most terrific, exciting yeah. experience? Slightly yeah. intimidating or...? Slightly, but I've done it a few times, so I'm happy, I'm ready, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And when you know you're playing Glastonbury, do you look at the rest of the lineup and think, I really want to make sure I see them and I want to make sure that I have time to see them, or do you keep yourself to yourself? Yeah, I try to see the different acts, although a lot of times we're just, just sort of hit and run. We get there, yeah. you know, set up, eat a meal, go sing, and a lot of times we don't have time to see the rest of the acts, yeah. but I always check it out anyway. Yeah. Uh, David Baddiel, the comedian, is coming a little later on, and he's talking, one of the things in his show is about how fame suddenly hits you and how that, how you react to that at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did Was that quite a, a jolt for you? You talked about that sort of five-year period when everybody knew who you were. Mm -hmm. and uh, w Was that a, a comfortable time for you? Or how was that? Well, it was an interesting time for me. Um, the thing I've noticed about my own particular kind of fame, if you want to call it that, is that people know my name. They know my voice when I sing. But most people don't really know what I look like. Um, and this was true back then. I could stand in front of a record store window with my name over my face, uh, with the record right there in the window, and people would walk by and not know, know that I was there. Um, so that's actually served me really well over the last few years. Well, I, now, I, now I think with the, you know, the way social media is and everything and the way we're so mm -hmm. visual about things, maybe it would be different now. I don't think so. I no. think I, in New York, it, the only thing that makes a difference is if I'm t on television. Yeah. <laughs> then for the next so, few days, yes. okay. we'll so say now hello. You've blown it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know. So there's that. Yeah. yeah. Lovely to see you here today. Thank you so much. Uh, you watch for out for the paps me. outside. Suzanne <laughs> is touring the UK until the middle of February. Her album is called Tales from the Realm of the Queen of Pentacles. Do you want to explain the title? Uh, it would take a long time. You know, okay. it depends on how long we had. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it as a mystery. Thanks. And the new single, Fool's Complaint, uh, out on Monday. Let's take a look at the weather. All eyes, of course, across the UK. Lots of problems.